discussed the three days towards Common Law Games too, in Glasgow, right? Now, before I went, you know, the opening ceremony, they had this thing where they were giving to seven causes around the world, around the poor countries of the world. You know, Africa was this, India was this, some of us was that, whatever, yeah? And they asked the world, this, this thing was in televised nationwide. They had about 60, there were 80,000 people in the stadium, right? Okay? And obviously the whole of, maybe about 10 million people watching on TV. Do you understand? Okay? Now, so they did this thing, this where they raised, to raise funds for these poor world countries, right? Okay? And they said that all you have to do, right, was text something like yes to a phone number, right? To, uh, and, 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 and text the figure you want to give, uh, 5,000 upwards, right? Okay? And they'll take the obviously your mobile company will take it out of your Johnson. Yeah, and then they raise millions. Do you get what I'm saying? Because they can, because the, 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 the infrastructure is there. Because there are people who want progress for everybody. Do I make sense? Am I I get what I'm saying? Yes. This is the mindset and attitude that we have to change. And unfortunately the churches are not helping. Are you getting me? Do I make sense? Yes. I'm not here to put you off church from God for me to right? But I am here to encourage you to love your neighbor with action. Not that kind of action. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I'm telling you to love your neighbor with what? Action. Not with prayer. Yes, with prayer is good. You know what I'm saying? Right? Like, like the Bible says that, says that the Pharisee they said that when someone comes to say they need this and this, I'll pray for you. That's what we're doing. On average, right, the CVs I see, right, on a daily basis, I would say over 70% of them, after reading the first three lines, I stop and throw them away. Why do you think that is? Yeah, yeah, along the line of the question, why do you think that is? Huh? Of course I'm really impressed. Why is he only pressed? Not to well put together. That's a very nice way of saying it. The standard of English is appalling. Do you understand? Okay. Now, guys, I'm not. I'm not being whatever. I'm not being uh, whatever funny. But I, but I have to tell the truth so I can help you. Okay. So please take this the right way in a way that you can improve on it. Right. I I have realized that one of the biggest reasons for unemployment today. Right is that many institutions, is that what's available for many institutions isn't good enough. Do that make sense? The level, of, especially of communication skills, yeah? When I say communication skills, I mean writing. I mean speaking. Do you understand? Those two things. If you cannot, if you, if you cannot ex express yourself fluently in those two areas, you will not get a good job, people. Now, this is not your fault, right? Not at all. Because unfortunately, the, the, the standard of lecturers in universities and the standard of teachers at schools is not as good as it, as was, it was 20 years ago. Am I right? Am I right? Okay. So unfortunately, what, what, what happens is that the level of people coming out of university and the, and the, and the, and the quality that is needed by the institutions there is a massive gap. Do you get what I'm saying? So institutions decide that it's better just to manage what they already have than to take in people who they think might be a what? A liability. Do you get what I'm saying? Huh? Do you get what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah? So for instance, I, 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 it's no use to me hiring someone for a particular job which involves writing letters. Right? And I still find myself writing all the letters myself. Isn't that a waste of money? There's no point in me hiring someone who will help me to get business. And I'm too scared to let them out of my office because they might go and disgrace me with their, with their, with their, with their standard of English. Do you get what I'm saying? Isn't that a waste of money? Yes. yes. This is what I'm talking about. The, 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 especially, some of you might be technically gifted in amazing ways. But if you cannot express it with your writing and your speaking, you will not get very far. Do I make sense? 
Yeah. So therefore, I encourage you, and we're going to start doing this. It's going to be part, become part of the Rise curriculum very soon. English writing and English speaking. It is key. Do not see yourself as above, above it, guys. If you see yourself, you see the, the proud man. What happens to proud people? Not just that you become poor. Do you understand? You will be poor because you you will see yourself too big to learn anything, to learn especially the things that you actually need, and you find you keep missing the boat. You keep missing the boat. Do you understand me? Yeah. Again. Don't forget, if your standard of and your level of writing improves significantly, it means that your CVs become what? Acceptable. Better. Honestly, guys, I can't, I can't emphasize enough. Most of the time I use CV, by the time I go through the second sentence, I put, I put off immediately. Ford, you've heard us Ford Motors, right? Ford was one of the richest people in America in his day. Yeah? But was his aim to be rich? What was his aim? To Yes, his aim was to make cars that every man on the street could afford. His aim was never, ever, I want to be rich. It was, I have a passion for people. I have a passion to make things, people, uh, things easier for people to move around in. Therefore, I want to make something for them to make their life easier. And I want to make it so that they can afford it. Everyone can afford it. That was his passion. His passion was his love for people, actually. Do I make sense? Yes. You get me? Yes. We are making it three. Third. Okay, sure. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. American business minds, philanthropist, and former CEO of Microsoft Corporation. He Microsoft out of a commitment to putting personal computers in every room. He remains the largest shareholder in Microsoft and has dedicated his retirement years to philanthropy. Let me put this another way. Where did his, where did Bill Gates' money come from? Where did Bill Gates' money come from? He's he's one of the richest men in the world today. I think he's top three. Came from his commitment to putting personal computers in everything. Yes, but where did that commitment come from? Microsoft. Where did that commitment come from? Microsoft. It came from a vision. I'm trying to link things together. I'm trying to link everything together for you. He had a vision of a world in which information was readily and easily available to what? Everybody. Do, you, do I make sense? That was his vision. Not a vision for the elite. Not a vision for the middle class. Not a vision even just for the working class. It was a vision for the whole populace. Where information would be freely and readily available to everybody. And thereby, where every person, every man and woman, would have a computer in their what? Oh. Homes. That was his vision. His wealth came out of his what? Vision. Yeah, vision. I, 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 hope, I, hope you, I hope you'll see the links of what the vision is. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah? His wealth came from what? Vision. What is the most important component of wealth? Vision. Are you seeing the link in what we're doing guys? Huh? Do you know what I mean? This is not theory all this. I'm using practical examples for you. But I say it's not theory, it's not biblical, and I've used it. I will always bring God into everything because I love my God. Right? But for those who want contemporary, practical, this is what I'm giving you. Do I make sense? Yes. The last area got final was between Arsenal and Hull. Hull went up 2 0 in the first five minutes or something. Yeah? But Arsenal eventually won 3 2. Now, Watching that match, yeah, yeah, was not fun. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, it was, I didn't find it fun as an Arsenal fan, yeah? So therefore, as an Arsenal fan, going to the Emirates Stadium or Wembley to watch Arsenal is exciting. But I might not think it's fun. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because I'm nervous. It's not fun, but I find it, I'm excited by the thought of it. Do I make sense? Yeah? Fun is things, you know, you just... Natural thrill of fun. You don't worry about anything. Like going to the fun, uh, fun fair. Yeah? Or the zoo. Yeah? Do I make sense? Or the beach. Yeah? That's fun. So there's a difference. Do I make sense, people? Do you get it? Do you get it? Okay. I'm saying there's a difference between fun and exciting. They're not the same thing. You can be excited about something, but it's not fun to you. Yeah? You can be excited about going to dinner with the most beautiful girl on your road. 
That's exciting. But she might be very boring. So it's not fun. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, because you are so excited, you're nervous. So it's not fun. Do I make sense? Okay, let me put it to you. Everyone here has been on the first date. <laughs> has anybody here been on the first date? Sure, yes. Huh? Sure. Yes? Yes. <laughs> who said no? Yes, yes. No, I know I'm sure. Who said no? No, if, you have, if it's no, it doesn't matter now. I'm just saying, how many? Tell everybody here has been on a first date. Sure, sure. Uh -huh. Was it fun? <laughs> exactly. I rest my case. Do you understand what I'm saying? But it was exciting, Abby. Yes. 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 I remember a couple of years ago, one of the individuals coaching, my one. Yeah. I remember his uncle, he said, look, he said to me, look, there's a young man that I need you to coach, you know, in other words, a mentor for me for about a year, right? Uh, yeah. What's wrong with you? He now told me a story about uh, which is not a good business, right? And then, so at that time I was very corporate. Remember I used to wear, I used to wear ties, the hair was like this, I had you know, short hair, ties, very corporate, look like a typical finance guy, because most of my clients in the financial industry, right? Okay? So I now, um, he now introduced me to, to my own, right? Now, let's fast forward a bit. After a year, right, I received an email from my own saying, Sir, I'm so grateful for everything you've done in my life. The changes in my life were incredible. I said, yeah, okay. So I asked, I asked him to come and see me. I said, okay, I asked him what's been going on in your life. They so now explain to me, right? Now, towards the end of our, 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 our meeting, right, I said, I said, quick question. When you first met me, what did you think you would get anything from our sessions? When you first met me? He said, no. I didn't think anything. I didn't, he said I never thought. He said he never thought of getting anything from I, I, I asked him why. He said because you look too corporate. Do you get what I'm saying? He said because you look corporate. So I, therefore I, I saw you as someone that won't understand where I'm coming from. Oh man. Oh young man. So that's actually. So I love the hairstyle, but also is to help young people know that. Yes, yeah, someone said rascal, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're right. You're right. Because that also helps people feel at ease and that they can relate. Do you understand what I'm saying? But when people see someone who's very uptight and stiff and covered, it's very hard to do. Do I make sense? So I've been known to you, right, despite you thinking, ah, this guy's there. It actually probably made you feel more relaxed. Am I right? Yes. Exactly. That's, that's, that's the number one aim of this system. Do you get what I'm saying? The last thing I want is to come into a class and you to feel that you cannot relate to me. Because mo in most trainings, right, in most, uh, look, not even in trainings, in most, any, any, any situation in life, when you first meet somebody, you have about 10 seconds to make an impact. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but, and in trainings, you have, about, you have about five to seven seconds to catch the, 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 the class's attention and to hold their attention. Yeah? Now, it's such a thing as what we're doing today, where I need you to be able to relate with me. If I come here in a suit and tie looking very boring and stiff legs, right? Or whatever, not stiff legs, but you know, whatever, rigid, yeah, okay? Before you even start and you already think, what am I going to learn from this guy? This guy doesn't understand. Yeah. Do I make sense? Yeah. yeah. So shut up. <laughs> <laughs> okay.